Hello and welcome to FlexMonster Pivot Table and Charts. In this video, we will go over the main features that FlexMonster provides. Here, you can see FlexMonster embedded into a web page. What makes FlexMonster special is that it's a lightweight and web-based JavaScript library. This means that wherever JavaScript can run, so can FlexMonster. Also, it makes it fairly simple to add FlexMonster to your project, be it a single HTML page, an internal system, an application, a simple web app, or a complex and cloud platform. Also, for popular frameworks such as Angular, React, or Vue, we have a ready-to-use wrappers and detailed integration guides. So, let's dive into the features that FlexMonster offers. Above the pivot table, you can see a toolbar. Through the toolbar, you can access the general functionality that is available by default. You can customize the toolbar and override the tab's behavior. Add new tabs, remove specific ones, or hide the toolbar altogether. Notice how the component is configured to display assertion data visualization on first load. Let's save the report. We will use the Save Toolbar tab. Here, we save the report to our local file system. But FlexMonster also provides an option to save the report to a remote server. Everything that is configured in the component is saved in the form of a JSON object, which we call the report configuration. Whenever changes are made, the report configuration is updated. Let's make some changes on the grid, for example, remove the status field by dragging it off the grid, collapse the quarters and remove the conditional formatting. Now let's use the Open Toolbar tab to restore our report. As you can see, the report configuration is restored in FlexMonster and we can continue working with it. You can also load report configurations from a remote resource. For example, let's load a sample remote report through the Open Toolbar tab. Similarly, you can also share reports. First, let's restore our previously saved report in the component. Now let's generate a link so we can share our data visualization. When a report is shared, FlexMonster generates a unique URL through which those who have access to your environment can view the shared report live. Upon opening the link, our report is displayed. The shared reports are saved and loaded from your server. The sharing feature makes it simpler for teams to collaborate and share data visualizations with each other. You can also export the current view to various formats or print the report through the Export tab. On a side note, the export result can be configured to add additional information on the page, such as page numbers, the current date, or a company logo. Still, this is not the only way to export the report. It is also possible to export the report on the server using a headless browser technique. This could come in handy if you would like to email scheduled reports. We started off with a pre-configured report. Let's see how we can create a data visualization from scratch. Since FlexMonster is a data visualization tool, first we need to provide FlexMonster with data. Let's use the Connect Toolbar tab for this. Here we can see that we can choose to work with different data source types. Aside from the provided list, we can connect FlexMonster to different databases or to any data source of your choosing using a special protocol, the Custom Data Source API. For our example, we will connect to a simple JSON file that has the following structure. So let's load it in FlexMonster. Upon loading the data, we can see that FlexMonster created a default report. We can further configure it by opening the field list. We can see that the field list has all the fields from our JSON file. We can select the fields we want and place them in the desired section to create a data slice. For each measure, you can also select the aggregation. 
Aside from the provided fields, you can also create new fields using calculated values. Here we see the calculated values editor. Let's create a calculated value for our wrapper to display the product price with the discount applied. We see that the created calculated value is now added to our measures. All calculated values are also organized in the All fields list below in a dedicated folder. Now let's apply the changes by clicking the Apply button. The data slice is displayed on the grid. Now let's explore how we can further configure our data visualization using the toolbar tabs. Using the Format tab, we can format the values on the grid. For example, let's open the number formatting controls and add a currency symbol to the price values. We can also define how we would like the currency symbol to be displayed depending on whether the value is greater or less than zero. Highlighting the grid cells content depending on a condition could also act as a visual aid. This can be done via the Format Conditional Formatting Toolbar tab. Let's create two conditions. If price is less than 10,000, we would like the cells to be blue. And if price is greater than 20,000, then FlexMonster should highlight the cells yellow. Let's apply our changes and see the result on the grid. Currently, we are in a pivot mode, specifically the compact grid layout. There are other grid layouts available, classic and flat. The classic layout, which is also called tabular, is also a form of a pivot table. The only difference is how the fields in the row section are displayed. We can see that in the compact form the fields are nested. Let's switch to the classic form. Here the fields are placed side by side. Aside from the compact or classic layout, you can also use the data in row format by switching to the flat layout. Notice that in flat form the data is not aggregated and is not grouped as it is in pivot mode. Let's return to our compact layout and take a look at how we can group the data on the grid. One way is to place the fields in the desired order. For example, in this report configuration, the status field is under the country field, so that the statuses are grouped by country. Rows and columns can be expanded and collapsed. Another way is to group fields into a multi-level hierarchy. Multi-level hierarchies can be drilled down to reveal lower levels or drilled up to show the top level. If you're aiming for a read-only wrapper, the whole component can be made read-only by enabling a single option. Here is an example of the read-only option in action. Now, let's explore the features available from the grid when in interactive mode. As you can see, you can easily toggle the component state depending on your use case. First, when in compact or classic layout, you can double-click on the grid cell to reveal the data records behind the calculation. This is called the drill through view. When opened, you can export the drill through views using the toolbar's export tab. If necessary, you can also disable the drill through view so it won't be shown. Next, you can rearrange the fields on the grid via drag and drop. For example, let's move status higher up. You can also filter the grid by a field by clicking on the gear icon. Here you can filter by manually selecting or deselecting certain members, filter by conditions or by values, and if necessary, you can hide the filter controls from the UI. 
You can also sort the grid by a searching field. On Hover, FlexMonster will reveal a sort control on the field that can be used to apply sorting. If needed, you can remove the sorting controls. When in a flat layout, it is possible to sort by several fields. Let's switch to flat form for a moment to see how it works. You can select multiple fields by pressing the control button on your keyboard. On a side note, FlexMonster also provides a way to sort a field based on a custom rule. More information about this feature can be found in the video description. By right-clicking on a grid cell, you can also access searching features through the context menu. For example, you can change the applied aggregation right from the grid. Just like the toolbar, the context menu can be customized to add or remove or override the available options. You can also use FlexMonster Auto Calculation Bar to inspect searching parts of your data on the run. Aside from the grid view, FlexMonster provides several built in chart views. Let's select the column chart. Our built in charts are pivotable. This means that the data is grouped and aggregated just like on the grid. If we double-click on the chart element, we can see which data records are behind the aggregated value. We can also drill up and down the chart and the legend and filter values on the run. You may have noticed that there are a few chart types available – a column, bar, line, scatter, pie, stacked column, and column line chart. But what if another chart view is required? For example, a donut, or area, or a bubble chart, or maybe a pictorial chart, or perhaps even a map. FlexMonster recovers this by allowing you to integrate with any third-party charting library. Here are a few examples of such integrations. Let's take a look at the AM charts examples. In such a case, FlexMonster analyzes the data and then provides a mechanism to pass the aggregated data to a different visualization tool. This way, you can add any other desired visualizations and sync them with FlexMonster. Now let's see an example of how we can create a dashboard with FlexMonster. For that, let's check out an example of a dashboard. Here the idea is to organize multiple FlexMonster instances on the page to create a dashboard. Each FlexMonster instance is configured differently to display a specific view. Search in chart, grid or data slice. Also, the component supports a split view when one component instance shares its visible area between a pivot table and a chart and they are shown simultaneously displaying the same data in a different manner. Integrating with third-party charting libraries provides another way to creating a dashboard. In this case, the idea lies in creating several views with charting library and then connecting them to a FlexMonster instance to create a dashboard. Here, FlexMonster analyzes, filters, aggregates and then provides the data to your charting library to display it. You can watch this video that explains the concept and shows the implementation of the approach. Also, you can combine both of the mentioned approaches to create your dashboard. One of the significant parts of FlexMonster is that it's highly customizable. On our website, you can find more than 400 examples on how to customize the component. You can remove certain UI elements, customize them, override to tune your specific needs, implement different scenarios around FlexMonster, or even implement your own UI controls to interact with pivot table and charts. There is a rich API available that can be used to interact with FlexMonster from the outside. In addition, you can even modify the grid cells content, for instance, to add icons or hyperlinks. 
Aside from customizing the duffel's functionality, you can also adjust the component's colors. You can either pick one of the predefined themes or create your own theme and adjust the colors, for example, to match the rest of your application. What is more, you can also translate the labels in FlexMonster to the language of your choice or simply provide your own labels for specific UI elements. Please note that FlexMonster does not translate your data automatically. Only the labels are translated. As for security aspects, FlexMonster does not send any data to any external servers. The data remains entirely on your end. Also, as FlexMonster is a client-side component, you can restrict access to the page where FlexMonster is embedded and implement any necessary authorization technique in your application. Hope you found this video helpful. In the video description, you can find all the links to the documentation pages with the topics mentioned in the video. You are welcome to check them for more details. Also, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us at our help center. Thank you for watching and have a nice day!